Well, now that you're familiar with the basic controls, let's fire up Varus and put it to work. We've recruited John to help us out. Hey, everybody. Okay, it's Friday morning. You just got into the shop. How do you get started? Cup of coffee? <laughs> I mean with Varus. <laughs> right, right. Well, first, let's power up. Press the power on button, and Varus boots up in about a minute. Then the Varus Diagnostic Suite loads and shows the vehicle ID tab. The layout of the screen looks just like Windows. Yep, works just like Windows, so you don't have to learn anything new. You can open applications by selecting Start and Programs from the toolbar at the bottom of the screen and open the program of your choice. Or minimize the Varus window and select a shortcut from the Windows desktop. You can have multiple applications open at once. It's easy to toggle between them. Now, how about navigation within an application? Just like Windows. There's a menu bar at the top showing Windows menus, like File, Help, and View. Under that are tabs for each Varus Diagnostic Module and the Vehicle ID Toolbar. To get started, I'm going to access the customer record. Varus always opens at the Vehicle ID tab. From there, you can create a new vehicle record or choose a previous one. Varus can save hundreds or even thousands of previous vehicles. Now, I haven't seen this particular vehicle before, so I'm going to add a new vehicle by selecting Add New, then simply select a vehicle from the menu. In this case, we're working on a 2000 Toyota Avalon XLS. You can also enter the specific customer information for this record. Color of the car, VIN number, odometer reading, technician name, customer name, and license number. The vehicle ID carries over to all various functions. So we never have to re-enter this information for the scanner, component test meter, or repair information system. Hmm. So far, this looks easy. Hmm. Okay, you've got a customer record in Varus for this vehicle. The check engine light was on when the customer dropped it off. So, what's next, John? Well, naturally, we'll want to use the scanner function to check for codes. Touch the scanner tab, and you see that the Varus scanner already has the required vehicle ID. At a glance, we see all the scanner functions available for each system on this Toyota. Codes, data, clear codes, actuator tests, troubleshooter, and more. Varus shows us which adapter to use. All right, uh, I'll connect to the vehicle. There. Now select Continue, and the system we want, Engine. The transmission type, Automatic, and select Codes. Hmm. Barris displays trouble code P1350 for this car. Uh, P1350 indicates an issue with the variable valve timing sensor, CMP camshaft sensor. And if you subscribe to ShopKey Repair Information System, like we do, this hot link will show ShopKey information specifically related to the P1350 trouble code. So everything you need is in one place, right in your hands. Varus automatically links together information from the scanner and the repair information system. Oh, don't forget, Varus also contains another source of answers, Snap-on's exclusive Fast Track Troubleshooter. Before we blindly chase a VVT problem, I bet Troubleshooter could save us some time. Let's see what it has to say about P1350. Good idea, Mike. Select Troubleshooter from the main menu, then select Engine, Code Tips, and P1350. Troubleshooter says that code P1350 sets when there's no signal from the VVT sensor to the ECM. It suggests that the cause could be an open or short circuit in the VVT sensor circuit, or a faulty sensor. We see that the VVT sensor is also the camshaft position sensor on this vehicle. Wow, look at that, John. Varus puts the entire Fast Track reference library right in your hands. Pretty incredible, huh? We can touch these hot links to get relevant OEM information, TSBs, circuit diagrams, and complete test procedures. Now that's a time saver. Troubleshooter recommends checking the waveform of the cam position sensor. And the fast track reference shows the sensor location, where to connect, and samples of known good waveforms. By the way, the Windows operating system on Varus makes it a snap to print this info. Just plug in a Windows-compatible printer in the USB port and select Print from the File menu. All right, John. Now, 
I know that you're not the kind of guy to just take a wild guess and throw parts at this car. So I'll bet that you're going to use the component test meter to test that sensor. Yes, just one click on the component test tab and we're ready. Select fuel injection, verify the vehicle ID, select the cam position sensor, then select tests. The component test function gives loads of information, including a complete description of the component and its operation. It shows the component location, connector pinouts, even the ECM reset procedure, and five different tests for this one component. Uh, we'll use the signature test. Look at how Veris automatically pre-configures the correct meter settings, so we're ready to go. In fact, there are literally millions of guided component tests in Veris. Nearly 100 component test procedures are shown for this 2000 Toyota Avalon alone. All right, let's run the test. I'll plug in the test leads and connect to the cam sensor. Ah, aha. The connector for the cam position sensor doesn't feel secure. This may have triggered the fault code, or not. We'll check the sensor to make sure that it's operating properly. Varus shows us how to connect to the sensor. We're all set. Uh, Mike, can you start the engine for me? All clear? Yeah. Take a look at the waveform that it generates through the component test function. Hmm. It's easy to compare this to the known good waveform shown in the Veris reference database. The sensor waveform looks normal, and I notice you're doing some multitasking. Yep. I can look at the scanner or the meter whenever I want. Okay, you can shut it off. Now I'll just make sure that the connector is tight and secure. Thank you.